part of being a role model, I haven't looked at it as a role model, although I know that's what it's doing. I look at it as um, a mission. Like it's 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 a goal. It's a it's your life purpose. So what whatever, whoever, whatever you are, my goal in life is to make you feel comfortable accepting what the world will bring to you and what you will form the world into be. And that's hard. So I don't want to necessarily be a role model in the way of you should mimic me, but more so in a way of you should find your voice in, in, in the route more so than the story, because everybody has their own story. Uh, for example, I, there's, there's a lot of growing we have to do as far as the homosexuality in, in the community or there, there's a lot of things we have to grow as far as biracial or interracial uh, relationships and, 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 and just a lot of things that we have to grow in that I don't necessarily think I'm the role model for, but I'm, I, I want to be the man in the, in the room asking the questions. I don't think I have the answers, but I want to ask the questions. And um, I'll always ask them in a way where it's, it's a little candy, you know, it's a little easier um, and not necessarily forcing it on you you know so role model I, I i guess in some sort of way i am a role model to a lot of youth um but i more so want them to find their story so don't take my my story or don't don't feel this that this story is your story keep your story and follow the journey to find your voice in life because that's that's the number one thing like i don't want a kid to die tomorrow and he was too busy trying to be me that that he didn't, he never found his voice. You know, like I, I have no desire to be that sort of artist in the community that robs the community of a voice and tell you what to wear. I want you to wear a robe because one day you became enlightened and then you were like, hey, you know what? I want to dress like like the the monks or the the greats of of behind us of a Moses or or you, you know, like I, I want you to embrace it for your own reasons. And that's and that's one thing about about this is that it's it's constantly growing and I need more people around me to be examples of how to find your, your story, which is another reason why I always have church people, why I have a, a bunch of uh, figures in, even in my camp, that are just as important as I am because, um, and that's another reason why I went with Atlantic. You know, looking at some of the voices that has come from Atlantic, uh, Ray Charles, the, the Aretha Franklins, the even who's there, like you have to have more voices that aligns itself and its vision with your purpose to really do what you got to do. But man, I guess I'm sort of a role model, but I hope just a model instead of don't take my role. Just let me be an example of how to do it, you know, like how to go and look for your voice and find it in music and, and just keep it going, man. Well, I, I would say this for artists that's looking to get in the music business, there's there's multiple routes to take. You could be an independent, or or you could um, or you could work with a label. And um, sometimes you can do that at the same time. Um, you just have to find a good partnership, and and that's what it's all about. So like doing my journey, I was homeless, uh, going from label to label, uh, living out of my car. Most labels, when I left, would try to steal my sound. Um, they would, oh man, this is something new coming. Um, and, and some of the ones that you, you would look at now and go like, oh, wow, they did like try exact part for part, but their intentions was to prostitute the sound instead of actually adapt the mission and change the culture and be an influence in that sort of way. So once I got to Atlantic, I was in the kitchen of, uh, Michael Kaiser. Do you know who Michael Kaiser is? So I was in the I was in the I was in the kitchen with Michael Kaiser in his kitchen and he was just he came in and said, Hey, I hear you that uh that ghetto preacher. <laughs> and and I was like, What? And he was like, Yeah, man, you talk crazy. Like, um, but I love it. And he was like, I wanna set you up with a meeting with one of my ARs. So he set me up with Riggs. Riggs, when I met him, he listened to the song and he was just like, Hey man, I think you have something and I just wanna, you know, fan the flames. And I was like, man, thank you. And he didn't stay there. 
he kept going and digging and digging and digging into reasons why he was involved with the music. And I think that's one of the things that you have to think about that have re it's really made our history is finding that person in the business that can relate to things beyond music and marketing or how many followers you have. Somebody that want to go the long run with you. You know, you, you get a Michael Jackson, you got a Quincy Jones. Oh, or you get a Frank Sinatra, you got a Quincy Jones. It's, there's so much. You have to find a partner. And in this music business, you need a partner like you need a wife that's going to really hold you down and work with you until the end. So Riggs, uh, Craig Howman, uh, Julie Greenwell, like everybody embraced the music in a, in a whole nother way. Julie uh, introduced me to so many people to say, saying like, you're my little one, like go get it. You know, it's all about finding a partnership. Relationships is really important in this industry and you have to treat them with care. You have to love on people and when they help you fulfill your dream, you have to show them that you appreciate it. And that's just whether you're with a label or you're with your friends. That's one thing I, I would say, if you're independent, don't carry that, because because for, 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 for a lot of artists, it come with a flair. It's not, that, that that's what's been in hip hop for a long time, you know? It's, it's not the way to do it. it cause, Cause this isn't about hip hop. This isn't about how cool it make you to look to em, em, uh, embarrass or, or cut down relationships. That doesn't make you look cool. That make you look immature. And in this, this is not about music business. This is about relationships. You, at the end of the day, when you die, you need somebody to reach your eulogy. You need somebody to carry your casket. Whether that's that serious or somebody just to help you put up some posters. Relationships. It's about relationships. And, and you know, that's one thing that I, I hope this, this hip hop industry really embrace. It's like family. Big pun and all of them, they had family. You know? When I know that we're kings and I know that we're owners and we're gods and creators, we're also businessmen. So I think it's very important for us to control their images and those sounds. Cause I tell people this all the time. Everybody think I'm on this kick. I want all positive music. I just think we need balance. Well, she was really one of the main reasons why I decided to do what I was doing musically. She walked out on stage and Erica sang a song that was real popular. You know, that was a situation kind of an over the phone thing. This is what I'm looking for. And I cut it in my spot, sent it to him. He came back with the critiques. That's what I think we should do. And we kind of, you know, hashed it out that way. We did shoot the video to it. And I went up and just started rocking. And it was it was real cool. Didn't get the call for the gig, but it was just, um, you know, his dude that inspired me to really do my thing. I'm playing music with him, you know what I'm saying? Jam with him. We did like a little blues. I took a solo, all that. And it was, it was a really cool moment.